Lakeland Public Television presents Currents. Hello and welcome to Lakeland Currents. I'm Bethany Wesley. For about a decade, the Northern Minnesota Veterans Home Task Force has been advocating for the construction of a veterans home that would serve the thousands of veterans living in and around Beltrami County. There are about 28,000 veterans living in the 16-county Northern Minnesota region. This region includes the counties of Beltrami, Cass, Clearwater, Crow Wing, Hubbard, Itasca, Kitson, Kuchiching, Lake of the Woods, Minoman, Marshall, Norman, Pennington, Polk, Red Lake, and Roseau. Supporters of the Veteran Home Project argue that these veterans are geographically isolated from the existing veterans homes in the state and thus underserved. In recent weeks, bills have been introduced in the Minnesota House and Senate that would fund the construction of two veterans homes, including one here in Bemidji. To talk us through the proposal and its potential impacts, I welcome to the program two men who are veterans themselves. Scotty Allison is the Veterans Service Officer for Beltrami County, and Joe Benny is a former Beltrami County Commissioner. Welcome to the program. Thanks for having us today. Thank you for this opportunity. As we get started, do you guys want to introduce yourselves, talk a little bit about what your role is in the project and your past service, if you would like? Yes, so I uh, served three years in the United States Navy, and then I served 28 and a half years on active duty in the Army. I retired in 2010, and I'm currently the Beltrami County Veterans Service Officer since April 2012. Joe? I'm a veteran of the United States Army. Uh, active duty 1957 to 1959. Served in the Field Artillery Battalion in Germany. Um, six years reserve time uh, that went into the Vietnam era, but I did serve in Europe in, uh, in Germany. I'm a member of the uh, Ralph Gracie Post 14 American Legion in Bemidji and also a DAV Chapter 7 Junior Vice Commander at this time. Okay. As we get started, I want to talk first about the, the numbers, uh, kind of talk about the need or the, the argument for why a veteran's home would be beneficial. So we talked about 28,000 people in terms of the 16 county. Let's break it down a little bit smaller to Beltrami County has, what's the number, Scotty? It's about 3,400 veterans. All of the information we got on uh, the veteran population comes from the American Community Survey of the U.S. Census from 2015. Okay. So that is what we use as our database. So it shows approximately uh, 18,155 veterans live in the Beltrami County and the nine surrounding counties. So you have a big density of veterans located right around Bemidji. Okay, is that why Bemidji has kind of been targeted for the place where this might be the most appropriate? Well, there's a lot of other reasons, but that's one of the reasons. Okay. If you were to look at a map of the 16 county area, you would see that uh, the nearest veterans home would be in Fergus Falls. Okay. which is over 120 miles away. And then there's another veterans home up in Silver Bay, which is even further. Okay. So there's a great need for a veterans home in this area. That is one of the reasons why we'd want to locate it here. But there's lots of other things like the Sanford medical capabilities here, the large Native American, American Indian population here, veterans. Mm -hmm. Over one third of the uh, um, American Indian veterans live around Beltrami County. Oh, wow. A third in the state? A third in okay. the state. So there's approximately 3,000 uh, American Indian veterans that l reside in Minnesota, and we have over 1,000 of them up here in this area. Okay. I think it's important to mention, too, that when uh, the facility is designed, built, and opened, uh, we will uh, take care of veterans' uh, physical, mental needs. Also, when you heard uh, Scotty mention uh, Native American veterans, we were going to, going to have a uh, cultural, spiritual American Indian presence mm -hmm. in the facility. Uh, we will have created a welcoming uh, atmosphere, if you will, for all veterans. Um, whatever their persuasions are, whatever their needs are, uh, beyond the basic uh, uh, residential component, but the, sp the specialty care that they will need based on the conditions that they've inherited uh, on their uh, service, from their service experience in combat and so forth. Fair to say their needs are unique. Yes, correct? they certainly are. Is there specific needs that existing nursing homes and services are handicapped in trying to help them? Well, I guess we could say, Scotty, that uh, 
the uh, so-called regular nursing homes do a good job in serving their clientele, but uh, veterans have uh, conditions and situations that are unique sure. to their service experience, uh, physical health, mental health, uh, the, for example, the environmental hazards that they were exposed to during the Gulf War, toxic, uh, toxics, contaminants, agent orans, wounds, traumatic brain injury, other debilitations. It's, it's readily available, for example, if you have a physical ailment, but it's not so apparent if you have a mental condition uh, that you've inherited from your combat or military experience, and uh, these are the kinds of specialty uh, care items that are unique to veterans and that will be met in the uh, veterans home uh, milieu that we will have created through the Northern Minnesota Veterans Home. Fair to say you've been working toward this for about 10 years, is that right? Very fair to say. Okay. And was there something that prompted those early discussions or it was just veterans were just talking over time or what kind of started the conversations? Well, uh, please chime in on this too, Scotty. Uh, there are any several of us through the Veterans Service Organizations, the VFW, the Legion, the DAV, uh, that recognized that there's a real void in this area of the state when it comes to a continuum of care that might be provided through, uh, through uh, veterans' homes when we, found, we found that uh, our veterans' populations were located two, three, and four hours away from pre-existing facilities, and, and therefore the distance factor uh, found that there were large numbers of either underserved or unserved veterans uh, whose uh, uh, medical and other needs were not being met. Okay. And the state of Minnesota has had a, a, a availability of beds. So the federal government mandates how many beds you can have for veterans' home capabilities within a state. We right now we have a deficit of about 144 beds. So if you don't use them, you just don't use them. So this is the time to get those beds in place because the population is aging rapidly, meaning that you know the over 65 uh, vet year old veterans has increased, has increased dramatically since the first time I took a survey of the number of veterans. Would you say the need is continuing to grow then as, as veterans are getting older? Yes, and, uh, so right now in our area, 55.1% of the veterans in the 16 county area are over age 65. But what you have is, so when we did the count last, we've lost about 3,500 veterans out of the, out of the area. But what's, what's happening is the population is aging rapidly and the effects of some of the toxins that they were exposed to, and I'm specifically talking about Vietnam era veterans and the relation to Agent Orange and their health conditions is, is just getting worse. Uh, the number of diseases that veterans from the Vietnam War have are multiple include things like diabetes, heart condition, cancers, you know, you just name it. And so those veterans, they're, they're, uh, what they need is increasing dramatically, even though the number of veterans is decreasing. Okay. I think it's important too, and I'm sure Scotty can give us better detail, but a prerequisite to having a veteran's home is having a community-based outpatient clinic located in the community. You must have an outpatient clinic to have a veterans right. home. Okay. And uh, right now Scotty will tell us about um, <laughs> the uh, CBOC that we have okay. and how it will be expanded and ultimately can be located within oh, the Northern Minnesota Veterans Home oh. itself. Okay. So the VA clinic and uh, they expect it to be open I believe around about January 2018. What I'm talking about is we currently have a VA clinic on 5th Street, mm -hmm. but it's dramatically increasing in size. It's actually doubling in size, and they're putting in capabilities that they do not have. Plus, they're configuring the VA clinic to look like other VA clinics. You know, waiting rooms, uh, where you go to see the doctor, where you go to see the nurse, telemedicine. So it is actually moving location, and it's going closer to the Sanford campus okay. as, as, we, as we speak. Okay. So that will be an enhanced capability for the veterans who are using the veterans home. Most of their health care needs can be taken care of by that VA clinic when it's all set up and ready to go. Oh, interesting. I want to start talking about the actual proposal itself at this time. So right now it is, correct me when I'm wrong, $16 million to fund two veterans homes, correct? Correct. 
and they would be one in Bemidji and one in Montevideo. Correct. Why the partnership? Well, it seems that we have a better chance in the legislative process uh, that we have a focus on two areas that has established a need rather than one alone. So we're partnering with, uh, with Montevideo to accomplish the desired result, ha getting our home in this area okay. and then helping facilitate Montevideo getting their home down in their area. It seemed to have emerged as a natural partnership in the legislature that now has a support from a broad body of uh, legislators okay. that um, uh, are from a wide area of Minnesota. Uh, I think we want to call attention to uh, uh, the two bills in the legislature yes. right now, House, House File 1109 Correct. and uh, the uh, Senate, Senate File. Senate File yep. is 1089, I believe. 1089, and we, we have uh, certainly staunch support. We've testified in committee before the House Committee Representative Grossel and Bliss, Representative Tim Miller and John Poston, and of course our, uh, our uh, senators as well, uh, Senators Paul Utke and uh, Justin Eichhorn. We have yet to testify in the Senate, but I'm sure we will be called. Okay. So we're gathering support and traction that we feel cautiously optimistic about that we have not had in the past. There's a kind of a, a natural life and growth to processes, and we think that that support now has, is becoming stronger and is better founded and we hope to accomplish the desired result before too long. Are you seeing that too, Scotty? You think that because of this partnership you're getting maybe perhaps a little bit more momentum than you've had in recent years? Right, like I said, I mean what you have is the availability of 140 beds, so it's a natural thing to split it, give 70 beds to each area mm -hmm. and then you, uh, you're supporting the veterans down in that area which there's also a need. Mm -hmm. uh, and what you have right now is it's kind of the perfect storm. You have the changing of the legislator, number one. Number two, you have, some people call it surplus, you know, there's various names for it, but there is a, a large uh, state uh, surplus mm -hmm. right now. And this is not a regular bonding year, so typically these kind of projects would go into the bonding bill, but there is a chance now that it could be just come out direct funding. Okay. So, and if not successful this year, then we would look for it to be in the bonding bill next year. I'd like to uh, just expand on your question, sure. uh, Bethany, on why, why two homes. Perhaps Senator or Re Representative Miller put it best when he said that if we put pit one region versus another, say Montevideo and Bemidji, uh, lawmakers will be forced to make a choice over where to build a veterans' home, where the reality really is that both areas have uh, established a need, and combining both bills to provide veterans home in the two areas makes better sense. So we're not pitting one area against another. How confident or how, how do you feel about the chances of actually getting funding yet this year? You mentioned the possibility of carrying it over toward bonding, but do you feel like there's a good chance this year? I, I believe there is a very good chance this year. It just seems we have political will. We have the will of not, not just the people down in the state capitol, but recently the Beltrami County Commissioners, uh, they passed a uh, resolution to provide $1 million in uh, bonding money or money to build to construct the veterans' homes. So even here in our county, we see the will to do this. We, uh, we also are, are going out to the other counties that are in the area, and we're requesting to see if they possibly might want to help with okay. the project. So, yeah, I believe my gut tells me this is the year. This is going to be our best year. I want to absolutely applaud uh, uh, our veterans service officer and his department uh, uh, in that we serve veterans no matter where they're found to be living. If they stop in Beltrami County veterans service officer, they will receive services and attention for their needs. And I, I think that's a, that's a wonderful gesture on our part, and I think that that is the thing to do. How helpful will it be to be able to go down to St. Paul and say, you know what, we have this $1 million commitment from the local counties, possibly even more if other counties buy in. Does that help show legislators that the community supports it? Absolutely. It shows that there is a, a pre-established resolve that this be done. We're also going to be visiting the... 
uh, tribal governances. Uh, again, you heard Scotty talk about the, uh, the substantial population complement, complement of Indian veterans. So we want to visit with uh, the Red Lake Nation, with Leech Lake, with White Earth, with Boys Fort. And they know of us, and we know of them. And uh, the, the basic uh, marching orders here is to deliver services to veterans, uh, a substantial portion of which happens to be American Indian veterans. We did mention the county's contribution. We should talk, too, about the land itself, because that is a contribution, correct? Yes. Where is the land, act, where is it going to be located, Scotty? The, the veterans' home, uh, Sanford, uh, Sanford Health has given a do large donation of, I think it's 15 acres of yes. land. It's, it was appraised by the county assessor at uh, $975,000, almost a million dollars. But that was uh, several years ago, so the land is probably worth more than that. Uh, but the land has been donated. It's there. It's ready to go. We just got to get the shovels in there and start building. Absolutely. Um, we continue to receive reiteration that this offer is firm. So we need to get these, these processes going to accomplish the desired end. And there's just a lot of, uh, a lot of support within the medical uh, community itself. Mm -hmm. uh, the uh, Sanford uh, Health Systems Board is uh, very much interested and in, uh, very, very cognizant of the needs that exist to serve veterans in our area. Will it be beneficial to not just have the land, but you're going to be located near the hospital. So is there, Absolutely. does that make sense to kind of have that communication a little bit easier? Sure. It's, right now, uh, you know, a lot of people think that all veterans go to the VA clinic and, you know, veterans in this area go to the VA clinic and then use the Fargo uh, VA Medical Center. But the fact is a number of veterans, because of age, because of the infirmities, can't travel. So what happens is they are, are they're given an uh, out of VA medical appointment, meaning in this area a lot of them go to Sanford already to receive medical care. So Sanford will, they'll have capabilities for our population. One of the things about a veterans home, you do have to meet the requirements of uh, nursing home kind of uh, physical standards or assisted living. So you have to meet those standards first to get in. It's not, you can't be able-bodied and go into a veterans, hops, uh, veterans home. So that, with having Sanford here and then having an enhanced VA CBOC or VA clinic, I mean, we'll be able to take care of the veterans as they live in the veterans' home. Okay. You might want also, uh, Bethany, I would ask Scotty to talk about the wait times yeah. that exist in the other home. At the existing and houses? Yeah, yeah, we're gonna get to that. Go ahead. Yeah, so right now, our office, we see basically about a six to eight, six to eight month uh, waiting uh, time to oh, get okay. into a veteran's home. Okay. If it's related to Alzheimer's or dementia, it's a longer waiting time, which puts strains on the families that wanna use the veteran's homes. Now, veteran's homes are uh, run by the state. They're not run by the federal government. Okay. So. And there's only so much capability inside there. We're not going to be able to take care of all the veterans. We know this, but we will be able to take care of some amount of the veterans at the end of their, you know, end of life kind of uh, expectations. So How important is it to be able to tell veterans that? You know, they go, you have gone out, you've served, you've fought, um, you've defended. Now you come home, you're in your final twilight years. How do they feel? You've talked to veterans, you're veterans yourselves. How do you feel? They feel as we do. I think uh, they, they feel as the President of the United States says he feels, and I'll, this is almost a direct quote, veterans have taken care of us. We need now to take care of our veterans. And I think that to be true amongst any and all veteran populations that realize that there is a real and present and substantial need that has yet to be fulfilled, yet to be met. Yeah. So when you're down in St. Paul, do you feel like the legislators believe there is a need and agree with you it's just a matter of finding the funds or what has been the what's I, been the hurdle i i think that the just my perspective is it's it's mainly a finding it's getting the will to find the funds okay. I mean, it is a competing thing there's lots of needs out there schools infrastructure but you know quite truthfully much of the ability for this country to be free and, and the way we live was put on the backs of young soldiers and young airmen 
and they served their countries and now we need to recognize the fact that, I'll give an example, in the 16 county area, um, if you count the veterans with disabilities, there's over 6,500 of them have some kind of disability caused by their military service. If you take higher numbers and you say, okay, what about people who are extremely disabled, now we consider somebody, what we call is service-connected disabilities. Somebody who has a rating of 70% or more typically has, they're quite disabled. And so their needs are much greater than, you know, the typical uh, American citizen. Okay. So they may be 24 years old and already be rated out at 100% disabled. So they have great needs. And like I say, because of the toxic effect of Agent Orange, the burn pits, you know, depleted uranium, the, the fires in Kuwait, the oil fires, and just uh, doing some of your business in deserts or in the, uh, in the mountain areas or the uh, swamps, it, it, it just puts things into your body that normally just wouldn't be there. And so that, so we have a, a pretty high level of disabled veteran population in the 16 county area. I think it's important too, uh, Scotty and Bethany, uh, to uh, respond to the question as we did when we testified in committee. Will you offer services to women veterans? Well, certainly, because they are a substantial portion of our veteran population. And we can and we will serve the needs of women veterans as well. Okay. And why do veterans like veterans' homes? It's the fact is they like being part of the veteran team. They're around comrades from, you know, different eras. They may not all have been in the same war. Some of them may not have ever been in a war. Many, about 52% of all veterans in this area have served in combat. The rest were peacetime uh, veterans, but nevertheless, they were serving. And, and quite truthfully, if you fall off a truck and you break your leg and your hip, it's still an injury caused by your service. Mm -hmm. But the fact is they like to be around other veterans, and veterans' homes specifically orient themselves on doing other things than just uh, staying in the nursing home, assisted living condition. They take them out on uh, trips. They take them to veterans functions, they fishing, hunting, they do lots of other things besides just uh, be a place where you go to reside. For your final time. Well pit, put. And also I think it's important to uh, note that the non-military population, the general population, very supportive oh, of good. veterans we found. Don't you agree, Scotty? Yeah. Statewide so. or specifically in this area? Both. Both, both. okay. Yeah, yep. both. And so, yep. so if you get the funding this year, how soon could the could the facility be built and open? That's a great question. Typically it would take from the moment the funds are appropriated and placed against it and we have the operational uh, funding, it, it's going to, it's a three to four year process. Okay. The operational funding, who would, who would fund the operations? That comes from the state? So when, 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 it, if it was built, the funds would come from both the state, the federal government, and from self-pay. So okay. some veterans would be, you know, they can use the veterans' homes, but they do not have a service-connected condition. And if they have the uh, where for all, they're going to pay their own way. A veteran who needs that kind of level of care, and let's say they had $500,000 in the bank, they're going to pay $7,000 uh, a month to be in a veterans' home. Another veteran who doesn't have that, you know, basically it would be paid for both by the federal government and the state government. So it's about a one-third okay. breakdown. And I would like to sound the clarion call to the state legislature in that there are 144 beds reimbursement available through the federal government that I hope that the state of Minnesota will capture between Bemidji and Montevideo. Because if the state of Minnesota does not capture uh, these beds, the funds for these beds, some other state will. And that would not be in the best interest of Minnesota veterans. Fair to say there would have to be some kind of economic benefit beyond the benefits that the veterans themselves would be receiving, I would assume some kind of job creation, correct? Yeah, we don't typically talk about what jobs would be created by the vets' homes, but you're right. I mean, what, first you would have the construction of the uh, facility. So that would, the local labor, you know, state, statewide labor, those kind of things, architects, engineers, and all that. And then you would have the operational piece which would require nurses, doctors, janitors, you know, uh, caregivers. 
Uh, I have heard it said that, uh, you know, Veterans Home, once it's decided to build one, generates about 200 jobs. That's what okay. I'm hearing. All right. And a good uh, uh, fill-in to what Scotty's talking about is where will these jobs come from? How can we expect that health care professionals can even be acquired, can be hired? We have Bemidji State University and its health care preparedness uh, career programs, along with uh, the Technical College, Bemidji Technical College. That's a natural feeder of professionals that can come to and be hired at the uh, Northern Minnesota Veterans Home. Natural, naturally placed is that element as well. And we have talked to uh, Bemidji State University uh, Minsky officials in the past. And we believe they, they would certainly be strongly supportive of this happening in this area. So what would you say to the viewers, veterans and non-veterans alike, who are watching this now, and perhaps they agree and there's a need, what can they do? What can, they, what can you ask for for help? Well, on the 20th of, uh, April, uh, 20th of March, at the, down in the Capitol, there's a Veterans Day. So if you're a veteran or a family member of a veteran and you see a need for this, you can go down there and support uh, the efforts of uh, the veterans down there to talk about this. Uh, you could contact your local legislators and tell them, yeah, this is, you know, this is what we want. You can also contact federal uh, legislators and tell them we want and get them going, both, both of the senators and the congressmen. And at the same time, Scotty and I or others, uh, there's an agency, an organization out in their own community, uh, some school group, uh, some community group, would like to learn more about what it is that our mission represents here. We're glad to come and present. Well, listen, I want to thank you guys for coming in and talking and taking us through this whole issue. Um, thank you for watching. The website on the bottom of the screen will take you to a site where you can look up bills to watch how they're progressing in the state and the Senate, uh, the House and the Senate. I'd encourage you to visit that and see how it is going. Thank you. Join me next time.